This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's a new laptop from Huawei. This is the Huawei MateBook 13. We already reviewed the MateBook X Pro, which was really well received. You guys loved it. We loved it. A lot of value for the money for a capable 14-inch Ultrabook. So this one is a, well, obviously from the name, a 13-inch Ultrabook. It has a 2 by 3 aspect ratio display, which is all the trendy thing. Microsoft does that with the Surface products, for example. It's fairly high resolution. It's got the latest Intel. 8th generation CPUs, Whiskey Lake inside, so those are quad-core 15-watt Ultrabook CPUs, but I'd like that 8.5 generation from Intel, a little bit faster, better Wi-Fi inside, so that's good stuff. We're going to look at it now. So the MateBook 13 goes on sale February 7th, 2019, any day now. In other words, there are two configurations available for $999 US. You get it with a Core i5, 8 gigs of DDR3 low power RAM, and a 256 gig NVMe SSD and Intel UHD 620 integrated graphics. Spend $300 more and go for $1299. You get a Core i7. You still get 8 gigs of RAM. That's the max with this model and it's soldered on so you can't upgrade it. And a 512 gig NVMe SSD. And in addition to the usual Intel integrated graphics, you have NVIDIA MX150 low end dedicated graphics. Now that's a low end dedicated processor that we've seen in some 13 and 15 inch Ultrabooks. And it gets you a little bit of oomph if you're doing something like Adobe Premiere or if you're playing games. Say, for example, Fortnite, which isn't so great on Intel integrated graphics. So this one makes it a little bit more playable. You get higher frame rates. Instead of playing in the 30s for frames, you can go up to 45, maybe even 60, depending on your settings. So there is a place for even low-end dedicated graphics. So it's available in two colors, silver and gray. And it's pretty darn thin at 15 millimeters, and it's pretty light, 2.86 pounds, which is 1.3 kilograms. Clearly, it's going after the likes of the Dell XPS 13 and the latest generation 2018 MacBook Air. Certainly, it has a lot more power than the MacBook Air. More powerful full Intel Core i5 and i7 CPUs instead of the low power versions that the Mac uses. And when it comes to the Dell, other than the fact that the Huawei is obviously a bit cheaper, you have the option to get the MX150 graphics, which isn't something Dell has done. Now, there's also the Razer Blade Stealth, the recent refresh that we're going to be reviewing very soon, and that one has MX150 graphics and the same Whiskey Lake late 8th generation CPUs, but that one starts around $1599, so yeah, different can of worms. The nice thing is for the price, you get a very classy looking aluminum chassis. It feels rigid. It looks like a good quality piece. It's understated design, maybe a little Apple influenced still to this day. Huawei usually is with their industrial design, but it's nice enough looking. The laptop has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio display, which is pretty popular. Microsoft Surface made that popular, and it's good for those of you who like to have more space to scroll your web pages and your Word documents. Less so if you're looking at videos, because you'll get black bars on the top and the bottom for 16 by 9 aspect ratio content. This is a touchscreen. That's the only option. It's glossy. It's not horribly, annoyingly glossy, but it's nice to see a touchscreen without having to pay extra for it. It's also a pretty good display. We'll talk about the metrics later, but it's they did a good job with the panel here. And unlike the Mac, it has keys that actually move more than just imperceptibly. It's a low travel keyboard because it's a thin product, but it still has tactile feel. The keyboard has two stage white backlighting and the trackpad's Microsoft Precision and it's pretty large, particularly it's pretty wide going across and it works just fine. It works nicely as we come to expect with Huawei laptops. They do a pretty good job with the trackpad. Now it is light on ports. Again, just like the MacBook Air, and well, Dell's latest generation XPS 13. We have two USB-C ports. They are not Thunderbolt 3, which is a little disappointing for this price. And we have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Now, some folks are saying that you get a Mate Dock 2.0 in the box, which has a USB-A, a VGA, a HDMI. Uh, ours didn't have it in the box, and ours is a review unit, so you think they would have included it if it was going to be there. So I don't know if you get that little USB-C dock or not. Other things I like, the power button right above the keyboard is also the fingerprint scanner. So it's sort of like right there, one touch, wake it up, unlock it, gets the job done. One thing I am not so fond of is the display brightness setting, not the display brightness itself. Uh, you remember a couple of years ago, laptops had this whole auto brightness thing going on. You had to go to the modern Windows settings and disable it because it would just bounce the brightness up and down or run it too dim if they were actually, you know, the manufacturer wanted to save some battery life there. Well, this has brought back that feature. And I don't think that's a good idea because the first thing I did is I booted up, assuming that that wasn't a thing anymore, that auto brightness. I was like, wow, it's dim. That can't make sense. So I went and looked at the settings and disabled it. 
very bright display, very nice. The metrics on it are good too. The, the gamma, the white point's pretty good. So not disappointed. It didn't quite reach their thousand to one contrast ratio, but hey, the resolution is 2160 by 1440, which is slightly oddball because it's a three by two aspect ratio display. Again, like Microsoft Surface products and unlike most 16 by nine aspect ratio laptops. So for those of you who want more up and down space to see more of a web page, for example, or a Word document, you'll be happy. If you're playing video, you will have black bars on the top and the bottom. The speakers on this, they're stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos software, which seems to be the thing lately. Thin laptop, thin sound. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. It's not horrible. It's not worse probably than the average for 13 inch, very skinny Ultrabooks, but yeah, you're going to want to use those headphones. In terms of performance, well, it's Pretty much the same as every other Intel 8th generation Whiskey Lake Ultrabook that we've reviewed so far with that little extra boost thanks to the NVIDIA MX150 graphics, which like I said, I'll give you a little extra love for low-end gaming kind of stuff. But the CPU performance, right on par where we expect to see it with its competition. To charge this, you're going to use one of the USB-C ports, specifically only the left one, which is unusual. Most laptops we review, you can plug it into any of the USB-C chargers. And with ours, every time we plugged it in, we get a little message in Chinese saying, no, 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 plug it in on the other one. It's a fast charger, which is a good thing. It has a 41.7 watt hour battery. That's not a huge battery. It's about the smallest, on the smaller end of what you would see in a 13 inch Ultrabook, which probably explains why battery life isn't a strong point. Granted, we have the NVIDIA MX150 version, but just doing productivity work where the dedicated GPU isn't called into play or a streaming video, that's usually not used there either. Uh, we saw battery life of around six hours. That part is not so impressive, and that's one of the cons with this laptop. To open this up, there's Torx T5 screws that are visible and really annoying. You have to peel off the rubber feet to get to Phillips head screws. The rubber feet have adhesive on them that is a little bit self-destructive when you peel it off. So be careful because it, you don't want to mess it up so you can reuse it again. Open it up and here's our two fans, one for the CPU, one for the GPU. They're really proud of their 8,000 RPM fans, which is pretty high speed. Usually around 6,000 is what we see for laptops. It does help with cooling. You will hear these fans come on, but there are very small fans. So you definitely will be like a woo if you're making it work really hard, but that's about as loud as it gets. Uh, they don't come on too frequently, but once in a while you're streaming media, you might hear them kick in. This is the M.2 NVMe SSD is a Western digital brand in our 512 gig SSD and it's shrouded both in Mylar tape, which might be for interference. And we have some heat sink tape over here on top of it as well. And here's our Wi-Fi card It's the Intel 9560 AC, which is typical for a Whiskey Lake generation CPU. That's a very good Wi-Fi card. So that's good. RAM is soldered on. You can't upgrade it. Obviously here's our big old battery. So if you need to replace the battery sometime down the road, you can do that. So yeah, there's that whole Huawei thing, particularly if you're in the United States where telecom equipment, mostly 5G infrastructure equipment, then the United States government said, no, no, China might be spying on us. They're particularly worried about their homebrew chips, the Kirin CPU and the Huawei smartphones and the network infrastructure. This being a bog standard Intel chipset should be safe in terms of security, but you know, who knows what's really going on there with that whole thing, if it's politics or if it's true or whatever, but I'm not too, too worried. You could always do a clean install of Windows, completely wipe it and delete it and start from scratch. This is a Microsoft signature build, so it already is a clean build. It's not like you're going to be losing a lot of extra added software if you did that. So that's the Huawei MateBook 13. And like I said, if you're looking at this versus the Dell XPS 13, where you can't even get that NVIDIA MX150 graphics or the more expensive Razer Blade Stealth, then it's a pretty good deal, honestly. But the one thing to consider is Huawei's own MateBook X Pro. Like I said, there you get a bit better battery life and you get a USB-A port, which is pretty darn convenient, right? I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.